thank you, Gianluca. So my presentation is basically the bridge between Patrick's presentation and what Antonio will present you afterwards. So Patrick presented this notion of network inference, and he compared, uh, showed some comparative studies, and using only simulated data. So, so what we were asking ourselves, we were working a lot with cancer data from TCGA. How can we validate those? Because indeed, as Patrick said, we don't have the truth. We might know some interactions that have been validated in experimental um, settings, but we don't know all the interactions that we should infer. So it's much more difficult to actually validate networks that have been inferred from real data. So what one measure we think is important is the stability of the inference algorithm. So if we slightly change the input data, do we still get similar network output? So then we looked at available data. So we have one cancer cell line. So there I worked with Benjamin's lab, who has a huge resource on this type of data, and then with Antonio to get the TCGA data. We focused on two main data generation technologies, microarray, which I will abbreviate GEX, and RNA-seq, abbreviated NRA. And parameters we want to study, or I will present you in this presentation, are the sample size of the data, the inference algorithms we used, and different stability measures. So the data. As you know, gene expression data, RNA-seq, we measure a huge number of genes, and we have only few samples. So here we will reduce the number of genes to the 1,000 genes identified by the L1000 project to be relevant in cancer. And we only use cancer types with more than 60 samples. The 60 is a bit arbitrarily chosen, but could be 50, could be 40. We just picked something where we had some data. So here you see the data we used. We have the TCGA data with 916 variables in common with the L1000 genes and five different cancer types ranging from 67 samples in read, so colorectal cancer, to 475 in breast cancer. Those are matched samples. And then in these four cancer cell line data sets, we have matched samples, so only 63 samples, but they are all matched over these four data sets, two gene expression, two RNA, twice the same lab. So CCLE provided both microarray and RNA, and then we have CGP and GNE. That was then looked at the network inference algorithm. So as you saw in Patrick's slide with all the results compared in the net benchmark package, there's a huge number of Algorithms. So for this study, I focused on those using mutual information. As Patrick already explained how it works, you compute the pairwise mutual information and then start with this as input to the different algorithms. There are those algorithms that infer sparse networks, Arachne, C3Net. For the first one, you remove the least significant edge in each triplet of variables. For C3Net, you keep only the most relevant edge per variable. So for C3Net, your number of edges is actually limited by the number of variables in your data set. And then you have the methods that infer denser networks, so CLR. Patrick already explained in detail what it does. It takes the distribution of the two variables into account to assign a weight to each edge. And then MRNet, you basically infer the weight by computing the relevance minus the redundancy with the already inferred edges of that variable. So these four methods you will find in all my result slides. Then we looked at different stability measures. So you have two options. You can start network-wise. You take the entire network and compare it to a second network. And what you do is you just sum up the differences for each edge. And then you weigh it by the number of edges um, you can have. And then you can also look node-wise. There are measures like degree of, an, uh, of a node or betweenness, which is the centrality of a node, to assess more locally the network you inferred. Um, due to time constraints, I will only show you results for the network-wise, but the node-wise looks fairly similar. 
No, it's the weights. It's the weights. You can do both, either binary or the weights, but I kept the weights. So how did I do the evaluation? So I took my data set D, I inferred a network, which is the full network, and then I did a tenfold cross-validation on 90% of the data. So I inferred a network on 90% of the data, then in the second step left out the next 10% inferred a network, which gives me then 10 networks. For each of them, I computed the Hamming distance with the original network. So that would give me 10, 10 values for each data set and each method. So then we can look at the first set of results on TCGA data. On the x-axis, you see the four network inference algorithms. On the y-axis, you see the normalized Hamming distance. And in each box, you can see by color the different cancer types. And then a bit smaller, you can see RNA or GEX, which is not that relevant in this slide. So one thing you can notice directly is that the algorithms that infer sparser networks have lower Hamming distance. And on the larger ones, MRNet has lower Hamming distance than CLR. So that's just a general conclusion. Then we notice immediately this rainbow um, of colors in each box. So what happens if we look at the different in difference in cancer types? So basically here you see in each plot one inference method. So the first one is Arachne, C3Net, CLR, and MRNet. And on the x-axis you now see the five different cancer types sorted by number of variables. You start with the cancer type with the least number of variables up to breast cancer with the highest number of variables. And you see a huge impact. So the sample size is crucial for your analysis if you do network inference. It's much more stable if you have more samples. So that is a question we still have to answer, which is not so easy because then we probably have, we can do some resampling on the larger make it a bit smaller and then compare that we can do. But I haven't done that yet. But um, rectal cancer. So then we can, in some boxes, you actually can see a difference, quite good difference between two types. It's a bit difficult to see the symbols here, but it's actually due to the data generation technology. So if we look at that in more detail, so again, you see the four inference methods. And now you see on the left-hand side the gene expression data microarray, and then on the right-hand side the RNA. And I here added p-values because it's not as obvious as before, which if there is a difference or not, they are all paired. And we can see that for arachne and mRNAs, the RNA gives better results. For C3Net, it seems to be the inverse. Here, uh, well, it's matched. So by because you have by cancer type, it's matched. So you kind of, if you do it separately, you can see it's by cancer type. It holds true. Okay, it's matched at the patient level. Yeah. So if you do that separately, you will get the same results. So the results on the TCGA data is the sample size is very important, the algorithm is important, and the data technology matters. But here we've seen it depends also on the algorithm you chose to use. So now what we asked ourselves is we often use cell line data to model these tumors. Do we actually get similar trends? So now you see same plot as you saw in the beginning on TCGA, TCGA data. And you see the results are even bigger. The differences between the methods are bigger. So you see the same results for cell line data as you saw for TCGA data. Which one? Like the cell line data. They have all 63 samples. Yeah. Yeah. They were all matched if you remember. 
So in this case, I actually don't have a sample size analysis because we don't have sample size differences here. Um, but we have um, the GEX versus RNA. And here it's actually interesting. You have a significant difference towards NRA for all algorithms. So for all alg algorithms, RNA data performs better. So, and since we have these nicely matched samples, what else can we do with the saline data? So this plot is a bit different in that the x-axis now is the combination of two data sets. So now I took my 10 cross-validated networks for two data sets, and I computed the difference, uh, the hamming distance between those networks. So I can, base, can compare CCLE microarray versus CGP microarray. I can compare CCLE microarray versus CCLE RNA, and so on. So I can compare all these matched data sets. And there you can see that actually the data from CCLE, both types, give me similar networks. And that the RNA data is actually giving me similar networks, even though they were produced in different labs. And the same does not hold for gene expression RNA or gene expression gene expression data. So conclusion, sample size is crucial. See, uh, the cell line data actually gives similar results as the TCGA data. Um, there's a difference between gene expression and RNA data as gene RNA will have smaller distances between the networks. And we, I didn't show those here, but we have similar results for the node-based evaluation. What is missing here is we need to do some validation with, no, with respect to known interactions, which is, as I said in the beginning, difficult because we don't have that many known interactions. We have to compare to normal, compare cancer types independently of sample size. That's what uh, Ben asked, which we haven't done, and then add more inference methods um, to the analysis. So this work was done together with Antonio and Gianluca here and with Ben and Dina in Toronto. And Antonio will now show you how we uh, get the TCGA data and what else we are doing with that data. Yes. Um, so I think your observation about the RNA seems to be looking for what is What I would do is, at the beginning of the paper, you can compare all those levels. Mm -hmm. That's quite interesting. But then you focus on RNA. So you take the two data sets, that you see here in GMO. And then you, you maximize the overlap. So then you don't have much more than 50. So you can do like yeah. 100 and 10 or whatever. And then it would be nice to have the curve of the stability depending on the sample. So mm -hmm. I, I, of course, it will I go up. Uh. Never reach a plateau. Oh, I mean, you won't see the plateau yet. Yeah. yeah. And did you try also pan cancer, like throwing all the cancer that you have? You, you have this in the mm. and you get some network that is valid across cancer types. We haven't, uh, we haven't done that yet. So for that curve, then you have almost a thousand so like determined to be, oh, maybe 500 mm. CCL and GMT. Yeah, yeah we, we should definitely do that. But we, yeah, I think it's related to the question of does, do the cancer types themselves have different uh, properties with respect to stability. So I think that's similar. If yes, then you have different effects than if no. So we, that's definitely linked to the question we should uh, still address here. Yeah. yeah the question shows uh, you find only L1000 gene. Mm -hmm. So what about if you reuse like only the description factor gene? I think it would be good to use those if we want to uh, validate them with respect to known interactions because we have much more known interactions when transcription factors are involved. But it makes it more difficult to compare because then for each cancer type you would have different genes and or you have to combine them somehow, then you increase the problem of network inference. So this was just a simple way of getting more or less the same size networks while still choosing some how relevant genes. So yeah, that's a bit of a trade-off. I think this is okay to do the stability analysis, but then if you want to move to the validation aspect, then you probably have have 
different issues. Yeah. So if they're right, they have no correlation. Yeah. Which makes it very difficult then to. Yeah, exactly. So I think here it's more about stability of the algorithm, whereas that question goes more stability with re respect to biology. But I think your theory, hopefully, you get a lower bound. Wow. Yeah. You get better results with, with more specific more genes, specific yeah. Genes. Yeah. So if you can predict those algorithms, yeah. then you have a problem. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, do you infer accuracy? I mean, do you imagine that it's more accurate because you have a more robust result? Not necessarily, but you might be more interested in a robust result if you use it for a biological problem. If you lose the signal when you have less samples, are you really interested in that signal? You see? No, no, no. The one we show is the same. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You still need to do that part. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Completely. This is why, in the end, we do need to do that. Yeah. By itself, it means nothing. Yeah. No, no. no, no it's, important I mean, to, at least give some, uh, it's important to understand the accuracy or how the, 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 the robustness trade with accuracy. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, I think it's important here to understand the behavior of your algorithm less than you, I'm interested in this biological problem. It doesn't mean I want to use this, but if yeah. the algorithm is stable, I might wa want to use it because of that. Yeah, because it's stable because it's too simple and uh, it's completely biased with that at the same time. It uh, I don't know if there is, okay, in the way our network is a big issue, there is no like a simulation, but I think you should have an axis of, of some sort of accuracy, of a proxy for accuracy, otherwise it becomes... Uh, yeah, ideally you would have stability versus uh, versus quality, yeah. Uh, yeah. Quality, yeah. Sort, you know, the method that has been so called and for Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 I agree. We need to trust. Yeah. But now because you when you see the big difference in stability, you see okay, you have a gain in being a stable or it's a completely invariant case. Probably you are halfway, you lose something, but you can so if you compare factors to the other thing, you can say that I'm not using the GNW. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, GNW. And this with the ranking of the method you know, because here it is real bounded by variation. You see data yeah. sets. It's not seeing with your data, but if it matches, then you can be very confident. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you need some proxy of accuracy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.